Hi everyone, so welcome back to chapter two of WYSIWYG by Mallory Blackman. So at the beginning of the story we met Ben who was convinced there is something in his bedroom and his mum and dad say no there's nothing in there you're imagining it but he knows, Ben knows there is something in there. So this chapter is called WYSIWYG Appears. Who? Who's there? Ben squeaked. My name is WYSIWYG. I am sorry if I frightened you. I did not mean to. I would have spoken to you before, but it has taken me this long to learn all the spoken languages on this planet. Ben looked here, there and everywhere, but he could see nothing. Whatever it was, it spoke with a l soft, low, echoey voice that made Ben's ears tingle. His heart hammered and he felt perspiration running down into the corner of one of his eyes, but he was too scared even to wipe it away. Where are you? he whispered. On top of the wardrobe, the voice answered. Can I come down now? Ben stared at the top of the wardrobe. All he could see was the suitcase used whenever he and mum and dad went on holiday, or when they went to stay with Gran. Are you behind the suitcase? Ben asked. That is correct. Can I come down now? The voice asked again. Uh, I suppose so, Ben said slowly. He wasn't too sure if, if he wanted the whatever it was to come down. But before he could change his mind, Something that looked like a small globe covered with golden brown fur edged out from behind the suitcase. It had tiny arms like handles coming out of its sides, two silver coloured eyes and a round fur covered mouth. The strange something bounced down from the top of the wardrobe and started bouncing towards the bed. Ben squealed with fright and drew back against the wall, pulling his duvet with him. Wizzywig froze in midair. What is wrong? D do you have to bounce around like that? Ben whispered. Well, that is how I move, said Wizzywig, puzzled. Couldn't you move a bit slower then? Just until I get used to you, Ben said. OK. Wizzywig moved slowly, oh so slowly, through the air, before coming down to rest at the foot of Ben's bed. Ben and Wizzywig sat watching each other until Ben couldn't stand the suspense any longer. What are you? Ben asked. I am an Oricon, Wizzywig said. What the people on your world would call a wish giver. Are you from outer space then? Ben leaned forward eagerly. Are you from Mars? Hardly, Wizzywig sniffed. I am from a lot further away than that. Ben's eyes narrowed. So what are you doing in my bedroom then? This couldn't be one of Splitter Lawson's tricks, could it? Splitter Lawson was in Ben's class and he liked to show people up by playing stupid jokes. I was passing your planet four days ago on my way to visit my auntie when some space debris hit my ship and I had to make an emergency landing on your roof, said Wizzywig. Are you a boy or a girl? asked Ben. Wizzywig sounded a bit like a girl, but he couldn't be sure. We do not have boys and girls on Oricon in the same way that you do on Earth, Wizzywig tried to explain. But if it helps you, I suppose I am closer to a girl, as you would know it, than anything else. Oh, I see, said Ben, not sure that he saw much at all. He sat back. Where's your ship now? Can I see it? It is still up on your roof. It will have to stay there until I can fix it, Wizzywig sighed. I have been bouncing around this immediate area ever since I arrived and I have yet to fix a single thing. I'll, I'll help you fix your ship if you like, Ben offered. He wasn't quite sure how he'd get up on the roof, but he really wanted to see Wizzywig's spaceship. Are you a wish giver too? Wizzywig asked hopefully. No, should I be? asked Ben. I am afraid so, said Wizzywig. 
It will take wishes to fix my ship. I don't understand, said Ben, not holding on quite so tightly to his duvet anymore. As I said, I am a wish giver, said Wizzywig, and I can only fix my ship by giving people whatever they wish for. So, if I wish for a new bicycle, will you give me one? Ben asked excitedly. It does not quite work like that, Wizzywig began. Oh, please, can I have a new bike? I wish I had a mountain bike, Ben pleaded. My bike is ancient and it's only got a measly three gears. Wizzywig rocked to the left and then to the right. Nope, she said. But you said you were a wish giver, Ben argued. I can only grant wishes if you make a wish for someone else, Wizzywig said. Oh, Ben slumped back against his headboard. He thought long and hard. How about if I wish for a mountain bike for Dad, but in my size? Ben asked hopefully. Nope, it does not work like that either, said Wizzywig. You have to wish almost without realising what you're doing. It has to be unselfish wishing. But that doesn't make sense. How can you wish for something without realising that you're wishing in the first place? Ben frowned. The Oricon put out her hands. That is the way it works. I am an accidental wish giver. I don't get it, said Ben. There are different types of Oricons. Some make dreams come true. Others make daydreams come true. Some give you exactly what you want. Some give you the exact opposite of what you want. I grant wishes, but only to those who make wishes for someone else, Wizzywig explained. That's a bit strange, isn't it? frowned Ben. Very, Wizzywig agreed, but that is my job. It is tough, but someone has to do it. So what about my mountain bike? Ben said. I cannot comply. Sorry. You see, but Wizzywig got no further. At that moment, the door handle began to turn. Quick, get under my duvet, said Ben. With one bounce, Wizzywig was at the top of the bed. She slid under, slid under the duvet just as the bedroom door was opened. Mum came in and before anyone could stop him, Tarzan the dog bounded into the room and raced straight for the bed. Uh oh, is he going to find Wizzywig? I have to wait till next time to find out. The next chapter is called Down Tarzan. So, I'll see you next time for chapter three. See you soon. Bye.